Yeah, which is crazy because our talent is immaculate. Like you are phenomenal. When I watch you work, I'm like, oh my. Yeah, stop it. I'm not an actor. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not an actor. I'm not an actor. Stop it. I'm I'm stand up comedian now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, it it takes even more gustos to do that. I could never do stand up, man. That. Whoa! That's... Hold on. Fuck off. You. That's terrifying to stand up. How? You do it. You do it. <laughs> what do you mean? I, you I have do a character. It. I have a character to hide behind. You know but what then I mean? With that, like, that's, I guess, another thing, another perspective to look at it. But then it's like, okay, create a character. And that's right. why I love English comedians. English comedians, when they're on stage, they embody somebody who you who they're really not right. in real right. life. Is that and, your approach to it? Do you? Do you... No. I'm I'm a storyteller with that. And like I find I've had more success with stories that I can pull from. Right, 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 right. I don't and know again, what that says about me, but I wish I could be one of the ones who could just make up a funny story, but right, they're right. not that funny. <laughs> but I mean like the there's something so comedic about about the mundane and and like the ordinaries of life that nobody mm -hmm. talks about, which is like when somebody puts it to you plain and simple and you look at it, you're like, fuck, life is really tragically funny. Like tragically, yeah. it's it's so sad that sometimes you just have to laugh. <laughs> no, for sure. So like even with that, where putting on a character or anything like that, are you just sticking to acting then or are are you, are you writing? I am, yeah. I'm do. I'm writing, doing a lot of writing. Um, but even anything the, you're willing to share, what are you writing right now? Um, I'm writing. I'm writing this story about uh this world in which, um, prisons are over overpopulated. So what they're doing is they're, um, they're uh inducing inmates into comas and uh like dreamlike comas and storing their bodies into prison walls like like they do in the morgue so you are to serve out your sentences in this um the the, the film's called purgatory so you're living out your your sentences in purgatory um it's an interesting concept. Does it's, that does it count though? Because like you're in suspended animation now, so you're not actually living out your sentence. Because then, if you get if you get defrosted, mm -hmm. then you're just back to who you were. It's true, but the world as you know it has moved forward. Uh, another like um, another factor to it is like you you don't age while you're in purgatory. So the world as you know it has moved forward. So once you're out of purgatory. Your daughter is older. Your wife maybe probably has moved on and is much older. And um, hmm. you have no concept of time. You are just in this dark purgatory where all you're doing is basically shoveling a hole in this muddy, uh, what looks like Vancouver. Oh, sorry. <laughs> in this muddy, rainy field. <laughs> Until your sentence is over. You can have the benefits of life. It just m means you have to spend more time in purgatory. You know? Um, so, yeah. And then and what then happened? Is this um, a play? Is this feature? Is this a TV yeah, it show? Would, it would be a feature. Okay. It would be a feature. So, cl um, Climax is you're, uh, this, um, the main character is released from purgatory. Um uh, this is the first time they've been doing it. So he's released from purgatory. It's an experiment. They release him into society to see how he, um, how he assimilates back into regular life. But then a repo man comes and he starts repossessing all these inmates to come serve out the rest of their time. So it gets messy. There's still a lot of kinks I need to iron out, but that's where I'm going with it. Um, who's your dream cast for this. you this guy you, you, <laughs> um i don't know shut don't up know. shut up shut up it's cool <laughs> we don't need to know more that's that was the right answer i didn't know there was a right answer <laughs> but that <laughs> yeah i love that i love that
Yeah. So what about, are you doing any writing? Mm, at the moment, a lot of my writing efforts going into like writing my jokes and stuff. Yeah. And so that being said, where you have exactly what it takes to be a comedian, you write, you have stage presence, mm. right? You And one thing too, that I've kind of realized is it's a, it's a monologue. Mm -hmm. You're doing mm -hmm. a monologue on stage every night. Wow. And wow. then the only thing is, is like, you just have to cater your monologue to the time limit that you have. So it's like, if you're doing a five minute set, it's a five minute monologue. Right. And then if it's a 15 minute set, it's a 15 minute monologue. And you're on stage for how you did it. Wasn't your last play fucking three hours. It was, three <laughs> hours. That was nuts. That was nuts. Like, you can easily do it. I just, uh, I don't know, man. Comedians, I give it up to y'all. There's something so naked about being up there and like, uh, oh, I yeah. think like the difference is theater is left for interpretation where mm -hmm. comedy is, it has to be funny. Yeah. And so it's like, even when I first started, like, I my jokes didn't my jokes weren't punchy. Mm. People would like get a small laugh out of them, they get a chuckle, but it didn't punch. Okay. Right, right. And like other comedians would like come up to me afterwards, like, yo, you have everybody listening. Yeah. So like, yeah. You have this stage presence. Everybody is listening to you. Now you mm -hmm. just gotta make it funny. <laughs> like right, right. interesting. Right. Yeah, so yeah. with that and then just the concept of just rewrites and I'm pretty sure you've already mastered the concept of it. It's okay to fail on stage. Yeah. Oh, for sure. 